Good morning. Hello everyone. So I'm gonna give it a second. Oh, I can see somebody's on. All right, so I'm gonna get started because despite my best efforts, I'm still running late. Um, but welcome, my name is Elise. I'm the artist and the owner of the Painted Brush & Co. We are located at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. You can also find us online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. So today, I've got this gorgeous table. Um, it has had a pretty rough life. Um, it's had a lot of repair work done, which I have then continued on with. Um, so now it's really sturdy. It's quite well made, but old tables, we know what they go through. Um, and you can see this table's been through a lot. So I love how rustic it is. And I have built on that, uh, the rustic nature of it with the paint job that I've done, um, which even if I show you on this camera with the live, I don't think you're going to get the detail. So once this is done today, I will be staging it and then popping it up for sale. So have a look at those photos. Um, you'll see what I've done with the base of it. There's a little bit of green and then some black and I've just layered it and then finished it with hemp, with beeswax and, hang on, I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> it's a good start to the day. The beeswax and hemp oil furniture wax by Hemp Bee Creative. So the base is gorgeous, it's done. Now I need to do the top. So I've shown you hemp finishing oil quite a few times, but I thought I would show you how I use it on a piece like this where I haven't sanded it back to raw where I'm just rejuvenating the timber, adding some extra durability and preserving the beautiful patina that it has, um, that it has from all these years of use. So let me move a couple of things out of the road and I am gonna bring the camera in close for a second so you can sort of see what we're working with. So um, now I've got my phone plugged in today because it's going to go flat on me. All right. Bring you in close. All right, so this is what we're working with. Lots of battle scars, lots of marks. There's been quite a few nail holes from over the years. It's definitely seen, seen a lot, okay? It's had some sort of finish on it at some point, which has been taken off. And then it looks like it may have been oiled, but it's more likely that it's had the finish taken off and then it's just been left. Um, and as a result, it's got a lot more whoop marks than normal. So it's seen, it's seen a lot. Um, on it, there was, underneath there's some extra supports that have been added prior to me getting it. And of course, somebody has then gone through and put drill holes through the top. So I have um, used some putty, just some brown putty um, to fill a couple of those holes. Some of them were already filled, some weren't. So I've gone through and filled a couple of extras. Then I have gone in with my staining blade. I just picked the first jar that I had there that was light. Um, so I've gone in with Purico staining glaze. You can't see that from all the way over there, can you? All right, Purico staining glaze. I've gone in with Storm. That's what I had open. Uh, and then I've just like done a little dab on those putty holes. Let it sink in, a little bit of a wipe. Now they look like they've been there for years, okay? So with this piece, we're all about preserving the history of it. I don't want to lose this patina. It's beautiful, it's rustic, um, and it tells a story. So I don't want to lose that. And that's why we're coming in with the hemp finishing oil. Now, in preparation, other than filling the holes, I gave it a really good clean yesterday with some hot soapy water. Just enough to get any dirt and muck and it was a bit grimy. So we've given it a good clean. Hot soapy water, I've then allowed it to dry overnight to make sure it's 100% dry. Sometimes when timber's quite old, any sort of liquid, it's gonna suck it in and it's gonna suck in a lot. So I do like to make sure that it's fully dry. Now we're gonna come in with hemp finishing oil. So hemp finishing oil from Purico comes in two sizes. 500 mil and 125 mil. 500 mil is $49 and the two, uh, what is that? 125 mil is $20. So these, this oil is pulled from the first press of hemp. It's all natural. It is incredibly durable once cured. It goes through a very natural 
um, chemical reaction process when it's curing where it hits the oxygen in the air and it hardens. Once it's hardened, it's not going anywhere and it's very easy to reapply later on in the future if your table's seeing a bit of wear. Um, it, it's a very easy to care for, very maintenance free finish. Now I've got it on my own dining table at home, which has been, it's been used for everything. Um, of course, we use it as a dining table on occasion. Uh, it is also used as my husband's primary workbench and um, it's had everything from electronics to books on it. Like they are, it's, it, and I've painted furniture on it. It's been through the ringer. Um, so it's, and it still looks as good as the day that I did it, except for the few paint spots that I've now got on it. Um, so hemp finishing oil, it's a really durable finish and Timber loves it. It will suck it up, it will drink it in, and it's just it's just match made in heaven, absolutely. Now you can also use it over chalk paints and milk paints. It is fantastic on chalk paint in particular. I really, really love using it over chalk paint because it gives you that really natural finish um, while still preserving the color of the paint as well and giving you that durability that you like. I'm not a big fan of top coats over chalk paint. Um, I like the naturalness of chalk paint. I love how it feels. And I find that using a wax or using hemp oil in particular keeps that naturalness of the paint that I love and that texture that I love. So if you haven't tried hemp finishing oil, I have popped the link in the description direct to it on my website. Um, otherwise I do have it in store as well. I really, really encourage you to give it a go. Any timber that you're doing, even if you're staining the timber, I cannot recommend it highly enough. I have been using this bottle, just to give you an idea, this is my open bottle. I've been using this for about two years. Uh, every single piece that you've seen that's got any sort of timber on it, I've used it. And majority of my chalk paint pieces, I have used it as well. So I've used it a lot. And I've only just, this is the 500 ml bottle. I've got maybe 200 ml left about that. So, I, and I've used it a lot. A little goes a really, really long way, which is another reason why I love this so much. I also love it because of how easy it is to apply, which I'm about to show you. So, to begin with, so we've cleaned it. Next, we're gonna come in with some sandpaper. I just wanna give it a really, really light sand. Just, it's just gonna knock back those fibers. It is feeling very rough. So we just wanna knock it back just a little bit and make sure that we're nice and ready for our oil. So I'm gonna be using the Pure Eco sponge applicators, uh, not sponge applicators, sanding sponges. You can use any sandpaper that you like, pick your favorite. These ones are fantastic. They come in a pack of four, at 320, 220, 120, and 80 grit. I'm gonna be using the 80 grit today. So, let me chuck things out of the road. 80 grit, I've used it quite a bit. These are great because you can wash them um, you can see I've got quite a bit of build up on this side. I can just wash that out really, really easily. So, let's move a couple of things. All I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna sand lightly all over. I'm not trying to remove anything. I just wanna knock back any fibers of the timber and make sure that we're ready for our oil. So, really, really easy. And this is like a couple of minutes. It's similar to scruff sanding, except with timber, you wanna make sure you're going in the direction of the grain, which is the lines in the timber. Stick with that, you won't scratch your timber. If I go against, I'm gonna scratch that timber, which is not what we want. Okay. I 
I always put things down as I'm walking off. So I'm just using a dry cloth, just a towel, to get rid of all that dust. I'm just using it dry because I don't want to make the timber wet before I come in with my oil in a second. Now, we're gonna come in with our oil. Um, it's up to you how you apply it. You don't have to work overly quickly. Um, actually, you don't really have to work on a time limit at all, but you wanna work in sustainable sections at a time. This is quite a good area. It's just over a metre. I think it's like a metre 20. Um, so it's quite a good area by, it's just over 500. So. Um, I'm going to put oil all over the whole top. If you're doing a really big piece, just work in sections. Um, on paint though, working like say a whole door at a time, don't do half a door and then do the other half, because the first half is going to soak in and you're going to see a bit of a difference in the colour while it does its thing, and you can see that sort of for up to that 30 days while it cures and fully soaks in. So you just want to use a little bit, and I'm just going to put it straight on my surface and I'm just going to sort of trickle it over. Less is more and you can always apply more if you need to, okay? Um, you don't want to put, put, I'm going to swore then, you don't want to put heaps on um, because what's going to happen is if you can't then get that off, you're going to end up with a really sticky, yucky, hard to remove mess. So. All we're going to do, and you can see where those lines are, which they'll go away. It's just because the timber's so thirsty and it has drunk all of that in straight away, which is fine. They'll all go away as it does its thing. This timber, like I'll stage it today, but it will most likely need another coat tomorrow, so I won't put it up for sale until then. So all you're doing is spreading it out. Apply more if you need to. You can go in any direction you like. There's absolutely no requirements here to stick with one direction. It's like wax. You just want to pop it on there. Just like that. Okay, so now you can see the timber darkening. Hemp oil will bring out the natural colour of the timber. This is most likely some kind of pine. Very normal for pine to sort of go this orangey colour. For this piece, I don't mind it at all. I think it adds a lot of character to it. But if you don't want that yellowness of the pine, go in with some Puri Co Stainer Glaze in the colour Whisper. And that's just going to neutralize that orange. So now that we've got our oil on, before we buff it, we're gonna go in with some sandpaper. I have got a 600 grit. You want anything 600 plus, preferably in the thousands. I don't have that today, I've got this, so this is what I'm using. All you're going to do is you're gonna sand in the direction of the grain. This is going to help press that oil into your timber. It's also gonna knock down any of those fibers. So when timber gets wet, those fibres naturally stand up. That's when your timber can feel a bit furry, um, a bit fuzzy, and it catches on your cloth. So this is gonna knock those fibres back down and it's gonna give you a baby bottom smooth finish, which is what we want. We want, we want the roughness, but we want the really smooth finish as well. So really lightly, and you just let the um, sandpaper do the work. all over and this can take anywhere from a couple of minutes to 10 15 it just depends on the timber and every timber is different as well Oops. throwing it away you can use the perico sanding sponges for this you'd want to use the 320 in my opinion that's not fine enough but you can get away with it So 
So you can see how I'm just sort of working slowly my way down, working my way down slowly rather. Well. And you can, you can really see those lines. So this timber is really, really dry. It is drinking in that oil. There's next to nothing left on the surface and I can guarantee I will need to do a second coat tomorrow once this first coat has fully soaked in because this timber is dry, it's really thirsty and it needs that drink. So this is hydrating that timber and putting back in all of that that it has lost over the last however many years that it has been uncoated for. And this is why it's really important, oops, really important to make sure that your timber has some sort of coating on it. It protects it. And gives it that durability that it needs as well. Okay, so once you've finished your sanding, now my oil has pretty much all soaked in. I can't even feel it on the surface really. But we're going to buff it anyway, more just to show you. I would probably still buff it to some extent anyway. But, um, this end bit just needs a bit more. I can feel it hasn't really done anything down here. You can sort of just pot a little block on. And then, uh, where are you? So pop a little block on and then use your sandpaper to spread it around as well. Sometimes that can be really helpful as well in getting that nice and spread out. I was still feeling that timber being quite rough underneath my sandpaper. Sometimes you can feel it, sometimes you can't. Uh, sometimes you won't feel it until you're using your cloth to wipe over it. So it's just sort of making sure that it's nice and smooth and sometimes it needs a little bit of extra oil on there as well. Okay, so once you've done that, you want to come in with your, I use my fiber cloths, Use whatever you like, as long as it's lint-free and clean. Um, I continuously use the same cloth for the hemp oil over and over until it's not usable anymore. Um, it's absolutely fine to do that. And the brush as well, I will continue to use until it's not usable. Just seal them in a um, Ziploc bag, something that you can squeeze all the air out of um, and so that air can't get into it. It's just going to make sure that um, your cloth and your brush don't always also harden as um, time goes on. So it just makes make sure that they're usable and make sure they don't get contaminated with dust and dirt as well. So now, all you're going to do, I can feel how rough this is already. <laughs> Shall we keep going? So this timber is just drunk in that oil. Your, if you've done this correctly and enough, your cloth will not drag over your surface. Okay, it will just sort of glide over nicely and it will be really, really smooth as well. Try again. Oh, we're still grabbing. Oh no, we're not. Too bad. So all I'm doing now is I'm just buffing, and this is the exact same thing as what you do with wax, okay? The application is exactly the same. Wax would also be amazing on this timber as well. Um, I would have no issue using wax on this. I think that would be a really nice finish as well, and it would do similar things as well. I do find hemp oil is, nat is naturally a little bit more um, durable on the timber, but it's up to you. Can you hear that sound? That's my cloth catching on it. 
there's a few quite bumpy bits. This top is also quite textured from all these scratches as well. So it's also catching on those a little bit. It's just catching on this little hole there. There we go. Okay, so that's it for today. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna let this sit overnight. Um, well, actually, it's actually going to sit for a couple of days because I'm not going to come back tomorrow. I'm not here again until Tuesday. So um, if I was concerned about it, I would absolutely come back in tomorrow, but I'm not at all. It can wait until Tuesday when I will come in. I'll give it another buff, see how it's looking. If it feel, if it's feeling really rough, if it's still looking really dry, I'll come in and I'll do exactly what I just did and I'll do a second coat. That's going to ensure that that timber's taking in all that it can and that it is hydrating correctly um, and that it's nice and even as well. These lines from the oil, they'll fade as it starts to dry. Um, and as it soaks in, it's just where it immediately started soaking it in and you saw how fast that started. Okay, so that's it. Super easy, super simple. If you haven't tried hemp oil, I cannot recommend it enough. It is a really, really beautiful natural finish. You can see how lovely it's brought out, the grain of the timber, the color of the timber, and it's really highlighting um, that patina and the age in the timber as well, which I love. So. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me today. Uh, I am here 10 to 1 today, 37 High Street, Eaglehawk. We are in Bendigo, Victoria. Um, and you can also find everything that we sell uh, on our website at thepaintedbrush.com.au. Our Puri Co is almost, almost fully stocked this morning as well. So it's a good day to jump on and um, grab what you need. We got some products yesterday and the last few days. So really really well stocked make sure you check out our clearance section as well we've got some goodies there that uh, might tickle your fancy as well but that's it thank you so much for watching have an absolutely lovely saturday the weather is uh cold and looking a little bit dreary here but hopefully it's a bit better in your end of the world bye everyone